Hi, I'm Priyanka Vargadia, and this is AI Simplified, where we learn to make our data useful. In this video, we're going to imagine a company that has large amount of data, which they want to use to make meaningful predictions and take their business to the next level. And we also know that their team has varying levels of machine learning expertise. To accelerate this AI innovation, they are looking at Vertex AI, which provides tools for every step of the machine learning workflow, from managing data sets to different ways of training the model, evaluating, deploying, and making predictions. In this episode, let's see the first step of the machine learning life cycle which is the data sets. You don't need to worry about data sets if your use case is generic enough. You can just take advantage of the pre-trained machine learning APIs. And to learn more about them, I've included a link below. In order to create custom machine learning models, we must first have a collection of data to train our models with. That is what data sets are for. Data sets make data discoverable from a central place. They provide the ability to annotate and label the data right from within the UI. You can track the lineage for data governance and can compare model metrics between the models. Now, to create a data set, we first select our data and upload it, import it into to the managed data sets. And then we can make modifications and use it to start training the model. Currently, there are four supported data types, image, tabular, text, and videos. Now, image data sets currently support image classification, which is where models predict one or many labels from an image. Now, for example, identifying the types of dog treats from images of treats. Object detection is where the model draws bounding boxes around the items of the image. For example, you're identifying the location of different vegetables within a picture of salad. Image segmentation is where the model can assign a label to pixel level regions in an image. To ensure your model performs well in production and there's no training serving skew, make sure the training images are close to the input your users will send to your deployed model. For example, if your images are going to be low resolution, be sure to have blurry images, low resolution images in there. Include multiple angles, backgrounds, and all sorts of resolutions. It's recommended that you include at least 1000 images per label. But you can also always get started with 10 per label. The more examples you provide, the better your model will be. Now, tabular data sets currently support regression, where you predict a numerical value, and classification, where you predict a category associated with a particular example. Forecasting is where the model predicts likelihood of certain events or demands. For example, you want to predict sales over a period of time. Now, tabular data sets support hundreds of columns and millions of rows. Text data sets currently support classification, which is where you assign one or more labels to an entire document. In a customer support example, an email could include classifications as great service or a suggestion. Now, entity extraction is where the model identifies custom text entities within a document. For example, maybe you want to identify all the phrases in a customer support email that reference pricing, too expensive or great value. Sentiment analysis is to understand the overall sentiment expressed in a block of text. For example, if a customer was happy or upset or frustrated. Now, video data sets currently support classification, which provides label predictions for an entire video, shots, and frames. For example, in a football game, you would be able to label the section with commercials and the section with the game. Now, action recognition is where the model identifies clips in the video where specific actions occur. For example, in a puppy football game, the action of a dog making a touchdown. Now, object tracking is where you get labels, bounding boxes, and timestamps for objects you want to track in a video. For example, in the same game, you want to track the football's motion throughout the video.
Now, we just covered the basic functionality here. I have included the link below for more details and best practices on data preparation. At this point, I think we want to see how to create and manage the data sets in the console. So let's dive in. In the console, we get to Vertex AI and click on the data set where we see image, tabular, text, and video data sets for the different objectives we talked about earlier. Let's try to create an image data set. Say we want to do image classification. Before we begin, it's good to check the data guide that shows us the requirements and recommendations. You can import files directly from your computer and they would be stored in cloud storage. We can then add the corresponding labels for our images in the next step. If you already have labels, use the import file option to import a CSV with your image URLs and their labels. The entries in the CSV would look something like this. If your data is not labeled and you would like human help to label it, then you could use the data labeling service. Let's upload a few files here. Once the files are uploaded, we can create labels and assign them to the images. We can also analyze the images we have in the dataset. Number of images per label and a few other properties. Depending on the type of data, your options might vary slightly. For example, if we look at tabular data, you could upload a CSV file from your computer, from cloud storage, or select a table from BigQuery directly. Once you select the table, the data is available for analysis. We can see the number of rows, columns, etc. You would do the same for a text dataset. Once uploaded, we can see the labels or add new labels to the data, and we can also analyze our dataset. The video dataset interface looks similar. I have some labeled sports files here for golf, cartwheel, horse riding, and others. That was a high-level overview of how you can manage different datasets in Vertex AI. In the next video, we will look at the next steps of machine learning workflow to build and train ML models. In the meantime, let's continue our discussion in the comments below. I am excited to hear all about your ML use case and your datasets.